All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to Chess Initiative. It's been a while since I posted a video, been training and, and teaching and stuff. So, yeah. But we're here today and we're going to be looking at uh, outposts from two games. We're going to be looking at a game from Mikhail Botvinnik and a game from the other Mikhail but nobody really remembers his first name sometimes. We just like to say Tal, right? So we're going to be looking at both of those games. And Tal in, in, in this game played as he can do positionally. You know, Tal was a creative attacker. Sorry about that. He was a creative attacker. But he was also an excellent positional player. He was just all around. He just preferred attacking. So let's get started uh, with this um, game. This is, yes. So this is Mikhail Botvinnik against um, Gregory Slalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
All right, we can say that White's structure is not too strong right here. He doesn't have the greatest bishop because his pawn is on e5, but I can say, okay, Black's bishop, he has a pawn on e5, sorry, and I have a pawn on e4. So it's not the greatest bishop. So in this game, um, Botvinnik is going to show us how to play for an outpost. This is actually a very important position um, in chess. You can get this position from a lot of different openings. We can, we can get this position from a kid um, structure. Uh, we can, can we get this from a perky, perky, perky? No, we, I think we can get something like this from a perk. But this is a structure that, that, that can come up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You can get this from a King's Indian attack. Um, so you're supposed to can get it from a kid. This is, this is just a typical structure. No, a lot of times um, I've misplayed this structure um, because uh, sometimes the, 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 the pawn structure, the way it's stayed, it has different plans. And if you don't know the plans or you can't assess the position properly to know the plans, you might go off and start to play wacky, wacky tacky moves. Wacky tacky. That's a new word. All right, Queen e7 probably just analyzes one game and then in the next video analyze the next one. Okay, and now we can see that I'm denying black any outposts on, on d4 and he's denying me outposts on d5. So we are going to see Botvinnik create an outpost for himself in this position on a square that black does not have control of. If we look, white has the bishop here, right? And this is an advantage. But how do we use it? Now, since black does not have a light square bishop, we can now look for outposts on light squares. We can't go here. Here is not really that possible because of g6 ideas. Um, and that's kind of solid. So let's see what Botvinnik does. He attacks the bishop. Bishop has to move somewhere. You know, he can't capture the pawn. That's crazy. A4, and now I am starting to see Botvinnik plans. He wants to get his pieces to control the sen this, this light square right here. C4, maybe C3, maybe later on we push this pawn and um, get rid of it out of the way. Or maybe we, we try and force some pawn pushes here. And we're going to have some control. Because if this pawn isn't here anymore, you know, we now have back our d5 square and we are playing for the outpost. The rook comes to the file. The queen moves out of uh, this nasty thing. But also, protects um, the central pawn, getting ready to possibly move the bishop and reroute the pieces. Rook comes there, okay. Black is setting up um, for some pawn break, but will he ever get it? The bishop comes back and now we are playing for our c4 square that we have now created and we have secured with these two pawns. There will no longer be any pawn pushes to evacuate our pieces from that square pawn push and here I would never take but you do have some people that are crazy and would take and that is just bad because you have this weak t3 pawn right so but when it does the right thing he pushes past and guess what let's look what is going to get rid of our piece from this lovely lovely square well he possibly is going to have to reroute his knight um, um to this square and challenge our whatever piece goes right there. The knight comes back, all right, and he's looking to play now knight to d6 to challenge the knight or whatever piece decides to come there. So we continue with our plans and the knight comes in and here Botvinnik plays an amazing move, right? An amazing move. It's, 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 it's spectacular. It's spectacular. Spectacular. Amazing. Ingenious. He plays bishop g5. Now, 
you might say, oh, that's a piece, but now we get back this, so it's not a piece, all right? Don't get excited. Um, now, what happens is that when we can get to capture this night, we are going to have not only that this night looks pretty on D6, but we're, we're probably going to move it back or something, but we get rid of the night that was challenging us on our outpost, right? That's a lot of arrows, we need to stop that, right? So we're getting rid of the night that's challenging us on our outpost. So he doesn't go for that. He brings back his bishop now to e3, and we can see that we have provoked weaknesses within Black's camp, and all these light squares no belong to white since he has the light square bishop still a lot of arrows capture capture and now look at this this is beautiful but vinick has outplayed his opponent in the middle game to acquire such such a dominant um strength on the central light squares he's just cutting down the board no one of the things about chess is that we can get things but our opponent is always trying to take it from us. Take that which we have gotten. But we will look how Botvinnik preserves this advantage. He doesn't give it back. He's a very mean man. Never gives it back. You know, he doesn't give it back. So the king moves. Pawn push. This is a very important move. Just, just kicking the bishop. If we look at black's pieces, black pieces are severely passive. All these pawns are on dark squares, so this bishop has no life. This knight is looking for a way to come out, but because these two pawns are here, it's a complete squeeze on the knight. He, he, he doesn't have any outposts, right? So the knight has no outposts, so he is ineffective, and rooks need files. So I think Black's only plan here is to try and trade off some pieces and hope for the best. So the rook comes to d1, and... I'm pressing next, but there is no next. Okay, all right. And Black starts his plan. He wants to trade off some pieces. He's down on activity. He needs to trade off some pieces and maybe suffer out the end game. Um, here is a brilliant move, very beautiful move, which stops this knight from, although it won't really be doing anything, but just keeping control of the central light squares. Also, just further restricting this knight. We're not giving our opponent any chances. Take rook, take rook to the file, take, takes, and we're 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 okay to trade off the rooks because our advantage is on the light squares. This bishop will dominate this knight, and this bishop is better than this bishop because since all of black's pawns are on dark squares, this bishop automatically automatically becomes better than this. And since the knight has no outposts in the position, um, this bishop will be better than this knight. So white has a clear advantage in the end game and he has more space. All right, pawn push. No, just provoking even more weak nices. Weak nices. Note that this pawn is weak. It is weak, you know. Um, yeah, so this is lovely. All of black spawns are now on dark squares. This is crushing. And the this is very important move, you know what I mean? Some people would try to move their bishop. They would try to reroute and, and move their queen so that they can checkmate or they do some crazy stuff. But king activity. Queen comes to the only open line. There is nowhere else for the queen to go. Um, no, we don't want to give even the queen a chance of coming to D, D1 and getting any form of play. None. So we cut him off. The knight now swings here, but guess what? The knight isn't going anywhere. It's not. It's, it's, it's dominated. Ah, we see this cute maneuver now. Now we can see the plan coming in. Queen wants to come here with this with this mating idea. But the thing about threats, 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 threats aren't what would you say? A threat. It's not 
execution of the threat that is this like we get to do the threat that is amazing it's just that when you threaten things it causes your opponent time because they have to defend and by defending many times their position gets worse and worse and worse so the threat really helps us in the time factor and also helps us in the activity factor because when we make a threat many times our opponent will um have to do some passive move to protect himself while we are improving he is is it disimproving or de-improving this is not a good word i i don't think i'm good at english all right so h6 and we see all the pawns are still on dark squares the queen infiltrates uh this is something that is famous in 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 on the davis channel right fm davis channel go and check it out very lovely channel pin and win right the basic <laughs> all right the bishop comes to c4 this is a very um nice move it's it's saying that the queen cannot come down to, to, to d3 um this is not a useful square so the queen cannot come down to d3 putting pressure on this pawn and this pawn at the same time the so bishop to c4 stops that um threat now queen comes down pawn push queen comes to the only available square to her royal highness queen now attacks this pawn so the queen cannot move because we are going to snatch off that bishop all right now black is opening up some lines black black needs something that's not what was played in the game mostly all right so black now opens up the game trying to 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 get some type of activity um but it won't work right it won't work he wants the if the pawn takes the knight takes and maybe pawn push and maybe queen here and we can hope for some something but nothing is there at all nothing at all so pawn took knight takes bishop check and we can see the problem of black's earlier move he's no longer protecting this square since the knight has moved this king is cut off and is in the mating net and no don't get tempted to win the queen oh i can win the queen with a discovery check Woohoo! but we played a stronger move bishop to f7 and it's check mate in one and that's it so that's that was the game but what we saw here was the changing of pawn structures so normally one plan in this is the english plan but we see that botvinnik went for a different type of plan in this game he went for a pawn structure where he created an outpost on the light squares that is amazing it's simply simply the best so he took space on the queen side with these moves and secured himself a outpost on the square where white has a missing bishop right he doesn't have a bishop there so he now takes control of those light squares this amazing move of bishop to g6 g5 which we saw to get rid of that knight which was challenging um our knight but we still get control of the light squares all of black pieces are bad we take more space on the queen side we trade off our rook and we play our advantage in the ending by continually taking away all active possibilities from our opponent and now we just put the squeeze on them and infiltrate their position while keeping them out of ours so even this bishop to c4 move sometimes when you're winning you still have to try and prevent your opponent counterplay because that's what they want they need counterplay 
So if you can get rid of that counterplay, well, they won't have anything really to be playing for. All right. Note that um, our opponent cannot uh, commentate this pawn. This does not look like it's going to, to, to work out for him that fine and dandy. This looked dangerous. Danger! Danger! Get on the floor. All right. And this was the game. It was a good game. I learned something about all poses. And that's it for uh, this video. I need to do the tile video. So I'll probably do it later or something. That's a promise. And a promise is a comfort to a fool. So cool. That's a Jamaican song. A long time Jamaican song. All right. But that's it for Chess Initiative. And thanks for watching. Adios.